Tonight, the fascinating city of Bologna. Ciao, bello. How are you doing? Nice. An Italian treasure trove. The best sausage in the history of Italian sausage. And think you know Bolognese sauce? Well, think again. My grandfather showed it to me when I was a little boy, and I've been using the same recipe since then. This is my Italian escape. Italians use three words to describe the city of Bologna. The red, for its red buildings and socialist politics. The learned, because it has the world's oldest university, founded in the 11th century. And the fat, which is a nod to the city's food and how well the population eats. This rich food heritage means I just have to pay a visit. If you look at the map of Italy, Bologna lies to the north, in the region of Emilia-Romagna. Bologna became rich from trade. Its merchants built over 100 defensive towers within the city walls, but only a few remain. As the city prospered and developed, nearly 40 kilometers of porticos were built. These were house extensions over the pavement below and range from early wooden ones to the later extravagantly decorated variety. With the city's trade and wealth came great food and the town gave its name to a sauce which is globally known as Bolognese. I couldn't come to the center of Bologna without finding out about the most famous Italian sauce in the world, the Bolognese sauce. I mean, I've been cooking Bolognese sauce since I was like a little boy, 10, 11 years old, and I just wanted to make sure that I haven't missed any tricks. To find out the secrets of a great Bolognese, I need to meet one of the best chefs. Anna Maria Monari has been cooking Bolognese sauce in her trattoria for 28 years. She is a legend, and I want her to teach me about her recipe, which was passed down the generations by her grandmother. Buongiorno, Anna Maria. Ciao. Come stai? Bene, tu? Super. Che stiamo facendo? Il ragù. Il ragù? Alla bolognese. Alla bolognese. Alla bolognese. Io ho sempre voluto vedere come si fa il ragù alla bolognese, quello là vero. Adesso io te lo insegno, e tu stai attento, perché sei giovane e hai tutto da imparare. Ok, I think I better listen hard. Qual è il segreto? Cioè, che cosa fai che, 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 che fa questa bolognese così spettacolare? Mi attengo alle regole e ai tempi e agli ingredienti perfetti. Anna Maria shows me how she prepares her vegetables and explains why her onion goes through some severe surgery. She just said one very important thing, whenever you cut an onion in half, you need to take the, the heart of the onion away because that is what it gives you acidity. It makes the digestion going really funny. Prima di, di morire lei, eh, ti fa, ti ci, fa... Eh, ci fa morire a noi. Ti fa morire. <laughs> she said, before you kill yourself, it's better to kill the onion first by taking the heart. That's the way it should be done. She uses a combination of minced meats that I've seen before, pork and beef. But what's new to me is the way she uses tomato concentrate. She said, whenever you put a tomato concentrate, put a little bit of water, so then when you mix into the ingredients, it melts properly. This is cool. People from Bologna use very little tomato in their sauce. But the British, Northern Europeans and Americans make a more tomatoy version. Anna Maria's next tip is to avoid wine. For the type of uh, ragù she makes, it will give an acidity. Ascolta, il ragù è una melodia. Mm. Bene? Okay. È come che tu in mezzo a una melodia di archi bellissimi che fanno ognuno del meglio di sé, fai così. She said ragù is like a, a melody. It's like uh, hearing all the uh, violin and the arches in orchestra, and all of a sudden you hear somebody drumming. 
So that's what the wine does. I'm not sure about that because the wine, if you take the acidity part away, the alcohol away, you should be able to pick up the wine flavor. But who am I to contradict this beautiful woman? And I think if I do that in Italian, she will kill me. So she's now showing me the pasta that is gonna go with the ragu, which is tagliatelle. Egg pasta made with 100 grams of uh, plain double zero flour and one whole egg. Nice and simple. E questo. And she said a lot of uh, elbow grease. A dopo, dai. Mua. Mua. Ciao, Carla. Ciao, Bella. Ciao. It will take eight hours to cook, and I can't wait to try it with a handmade tagliatelle. People make the mistake of using slippery spaghetti for this dish, but bolognese sauce sticks much better to wider, flatter tagliatelle. The end result looks delicious, but how does it taste? The meat, I would expect it to be heavier, but it's not. It's actually quite light. I love the balance of the flavor, and the texture is very fascinating because it's not too much sauce. You got a little pieces of heaven into your mouth that really explodes. I've never tried a ragù alla bolognese like this before. And I understand why she is the queen of the ragù alla bolognese. Ho detto, mo, ora capisco perché tu sei la regina del ragù alla bolognese. Brava. Molto grazie. Brava, 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 brava. Grazie, grazie, grazie. Anna Maria's pasta was stunning. And it's made me want to cook a special version of tagliatelle alla bolognese. So I'm heading up to the rooftops of this lovely city to cook a recipe that's been in my family for many years. My grandfather showed it to me when I was a little boy and I've been using the same recipe since then. I'm using minced beef and pork, which needs a bit of a massage. Drizzle a little olive oil on top. Then use your fingertips to loosen up the meat. And this is a great tip because then when you fry the meat, it's gonna crumble very, very easy. Once you coated all the meat with oil, set aside and wash your hands. I'm starting my bolognese sauce with an Italian vegetable base of celery, onion, and carrots. This is called soffritto. These chopped vegetables caramelize and give a rich flavor. I remember my grandfather used to say to me, if you don't have the soffritto, do something else. Don't make a bolognese sauce, otherwise it's not gonna work. My soffritto is nice and golden. Now it's time to add the meat. What do you have to do? With the help of a wooden spoon, break the meat into the pan. The beef texture plus the fat and flavor from the pork make a winning combination. But please don't tell Anna Maria what I'm gonna use next. Let me tell you something. If the red wine is not good for your palate, it shouldn't be good for cooking. Trust me. Once the alcohol has evaporated, I add my grandfather's secret ingredient. Milk. The reason why you add milk is because it helps to tenderize the meat. Don't add too much. Probably you want about six to seven tablespoons, no more than that. And make sure you stir everything together again. You won't allow the milk to bubble away for about a couple of minutes. Whenever you make bolognese sauce, you should never put too much tomatoes in it. Okay, so what I'm gonna start is with double tomato concentrates. It's gonna give me a nice shiny to the sauce and lots of flavors. Next, I'm going to add the passata. Sieve tomato, about 300 milliliter. That's all the tomato I'm using, and it needs to be properly mixed into the meat. It's time to pour in the vegetable stock, enough to cover the meat. This succulent sauce needs to simmer for three hours and then rest for a more intense flavor. I couldn't serve my beautiful sauce with anything except tagliatelle. Always mix the pasta into the sauce so every strand gets a good coating. Pile it high. The last touch, 
a little drizzle of extra virgin olive oil on top. Buonissimo. And there you have it. My grandfather tagliatelle alla bolognese cooked right here on the top of Bologna. Happy Gino. I have found out all I can about the city's most famous food. But there is more to discover. I'm enjoying my time in Bologna. Often overlooked by tourists for nearby Florence or Siena. Bologna may be world famous for naming a pasta sauce, but there is another food produced here which the locals are proud of, mortadella. It may look like spam, but this is a specialty cured pork sausage. It's made from shoulder and cubes of fat. And where better to try it than this beautiful shop where I'm meeting fourth generation butcher, Davide Simoni. Ciao, bello. How are you doing? Nice. If you had to describe mortadella, how would you describe it? Mortadella is the best sausage in the history of Italian sausage. And what are the main ingredients for the traditional mortadella from Bologna? The pink is uh, the shoulder, so the best thin part of the pig, and the cheek, the best fat. Pepper, salt, and one day for cooking. That's it, so very simple. You must have some mortadella for me to try. Of course. Mortadella is my favorite meat. I've always loved its mild, sweet taste. It's very smooth, mm -hmm. it's got this kind of velvety texture, and it's not too fattening either. What are the different ways that people eat mortadella here in Bologna? We have it for breakfast in a panini, we have it for lunch, for example, grilled over a barbecue, we have it for antipasti in a skewer or in dadini, what we call this square uh, shape. But above all, we put it in the filling for tortellini. That's our traditional pasta. So not only do people from Bologna eat mortadella for every meal, they also stuff it into their pasta. If you go everywhere in Italy, there is always a particular shape of pasta which is associated with a region or with a town, with a city. It would be impossible for me to come to Bologna and not to learn how to make the Bologna shape of pasta, which is tortellini and tortelloni. Tortelloni are large ring-shaped pasta, usually stuffed with ricotta cheese and spinach. Tortellini are the smaller version, normally filled with mixed meats and served with broth. I'm off to visit sisters Monica and Daniela Ventura, who I've heard make some of the best tortellini in town. Buongiorno. Oh, Buongiorno. Come va? Ciao. How do you make your pasta? Only flour, double O, and uh, eggs. Without salt, without uh, oil, nothing. Only that. Fresh pasta without salt? Why? Because you salt the water. Ah. I always make fresh pasta with a little <laughs> pinch of salt. No? <laughs> no. That's the way my mother told me. <laughs> How am I going to say now to my mother that she was wrong? <laughs> What's the oh. feeling in there? What have we got? It's an old recipe. We cook it with the butter, pork, mortadella, ham. Mm -hmm. So this is actually already cooked? Yes. Girls, what are we doing here? So we are putting some filling in the, in the square, and then we start to close tortellinis. You're going too fast. The sisters may be going fast, but it's not surprising. They have been making pasta here for 18 years. They fold the corners together and trap the filling inside. Then the pasta triangle is turned around their finger for that circular shape. So how is the tortellini shape came about? The legend says a priest uh, saw through the keyhole a fantastic woman that was Venus, and uh, he saw the belly button. 
and so he decided to reproduce uh, with uh, making pasta uh, the shape that he fell in love with. So he made tortellino, and as, as you can see, it's like oh, a I belly see. button. And tell me something, this priest that looks through a keyhole, a naked woman, and the only thing that he's fascinated with is a belly button. <laughs> he was a priest. <laughs> so, oh, oh, I see, all right, all right, all right, all right. that's why he's the priest. <laughs> Time for me to make my first tortellino. Yes. And it's a little fiddly. Squeeze. Squeeze, one second. Then turn around. Perfect. Wow. This is my first belly button. Oh. Look. Huh? It's good. Not bad. No. <laughs> if you go faster for Christmas, we can ask you to come here and work and make uh, 60 kilos a day of tortellinis. <laughs> 60 kilos of these things? Uh, yeah. Oh no, no, no. I, I think I'm going to uh, go to holiday. <laughs> I'm going to go somewhere else at Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who showed you how to make tortellini? Uh, <laughs> when we were little young girls, our grandma, our mother uh, started to teach us uh, how to make tortellinis. The problem was that we made one and ate three. <laughs> so we oh, were I out see. of the kitchen. <laughs> okay, I want to try the tortellinis. Too much yes. talking, I need to start to okay, taste. So What's the best oh. way to do it? These gorgeous tortellini are simmered and served in chicken broth. And I can't wait to get my teeth into them. The first thing that I get is the mortadella. Then definitely the pork. Buoni, buoni, buoni. Simple flavors. Yeah, Great, nice and al dente. I love it, love it. Pasta fillings don't always have to be savory. So I've come up with an idea for sweet pasta, stuffed with ricotta cheese, nuts, and delicious chocolate chips. It's gonna be the best desserts you ever had. And where do we start? Right here, with double zero plain white flour. In there, I'm going to add two whole egg and one egg yolk. In goes unsalted butter and caster sugar. Get yourself a wooden spoon and start to work the flour into the egg, the butter and the sugar with the back of the wooden spoon. Straight in, from the middle, go around. This technique stops me getting messy. I'm gonna get the back of the wooden spoon sticky first, and then I'm gonna put my fingers in there. Turn the dough out and knead away. And with a little Gino magic, the dough is done. Rest the dough in a fridge for 15 minutes. It will be easier to roll. For the filling, I've got ricotta cheese. Make sure, with the help of a fork, that you make the ricotta nice and smooth. Chopped hazelnuts give a crunch. Then add the zest of one whole orange. And would you believe it? Chocolate chips for pasta. Mix everything together. I've made some discs with the rested pastry, but before they can be filled, make sure you go yourself a beaten egg and a pastry brush. Gently brush the egg all around the edges of the disc, and that is gonna help you to seal the discs properly. Now I load up each disc with my sweet mixture. But don't overfill them, or the parcels won't close and will burst when you cook them. Carefully close up the discs, pressing the edges. Just to make sure that the filling doesn't go anywhere, I'm going to use a fork to press it down. A fork makes the edge stronger and much prettier. It's time to fry. Pick up the pasta and go straight in. Exciting. Beautiful. Look at that. All nice and golden, bubbling away. This is going to be great. 
This is taking approximately one and a half minute on each side and they're ready to come out. Definitely ready. Nice and crispy. So get yourself straight away a serving plate. These half moons are best served hot. So you need to be quick here. I'm gonna drizzle a little honey on top. And finally, a little touch of icing sugar. Beautiful. Sweet pasta filled with ricotta cheese, crushed hazelnuts, orange zest, and chocolate chip. Enjoy. My time in Bologna has come to an end. I've realized that the traditions and recipes of this area are passed down the generations. The home of Italian food will always be a special part of my Italian escape.